Good evening, everyone, and thanks so much for joining us tonight. I'm Sophie Erber. The spread of COVID-19 across the state of Iowa once again accelerating in pace. The most populous counties have the largest number of new cases, but rural communities tonight outpacing them in infection rate per 100,000 people. The latest from Governor Kim Reynolds is our top story at 5. Governor Reynolds saying that the recent news coverage has warned Iowans hospital beds in some areas are in fact full, suggesting people might not be able to receive care. But the governor also says hospital leaders assure her team that is not the case. While hospitals are experiencing sharp increases in patient volume due to, in, due to the impact of COVID-19, they still are accepting patients. In fact, most hospitals are continuing to provide elective surgeries, although some have scaled back to open beds for more patients as needed. According to the IDPH, nearly half of the state's hospital beds are being used by COVID-19 patients. Governor Reynolds also addressing testing capacity statewide, saying Iowa has 140,000 remaining test kits and that Iowa's drive through test Iowa sites can now handle a capacity of 4,040 Iowans per day. But the governor also stresses that there are several other options for Iowans who are seeking a test. Not only is there Test Iowa, there are clinics, there are doctors, and there are other entities that are providing antigen testing. So we're going to continue to uh, make sure that we address the need and we'll adjust like we just did, Kay. I mean, we've continued to adjust throughout this process and we're every day we're finding additional opportunities to expand that. This evening, the state is set to include more detailed virus hospitalization information on its coronavirus website. The data will differentiate between patients who are in hospital because of COVID-19 or another reason, but they tested positive. Meanwhile, in Nebraska, Governor Pete Ricketts says the pandemic is also getting worse there. Both cases and hospitalization numbers on the rise. In the span of seven weeks' time, COVID-19 hospitalizations rose from roughly 200 to 885. Folks, we got to knock down this curve. Okay, we got to you know flatten the curve here, so that we are not seeing the increasing hospitalizations that we've seen. And if that doesn't happen, we will have to take more restrictive measures, such as we saw this spring. Uh, again, as I've long said, though, I oppose mask mandate. We need to teach people when to use a mask. I do believe masks work. Ricketts also saying the goal is to ensure hospital beds are available to those who need it most, and that Nebraska has so far been successful in maintaining that availability. You can rewatch today's press conference from the governor on our website right now, SiouxLandProud.com. Let's take a look now at the latest COVID-19 numbers here in Siouxland. Woodbury County health officials reporting 136 new cases in the past 24 hours. 63 patients currently in hospital countywide due to COVID-19. Woodbury County now has more than 8,800 positive cases. Meanwhile, Plymouth County has more than 2,200 total cases. In Nebraska, Dakota County has 30 new positive tests today. The county has more than 2,800 cases total. And in South Dakota, Union County reports 27 new infections. That county tallies more than 900 total cases. All of West Middle School tonight moving to emergency response virtual learning. For the next two weeks, we're learning this information just in the last hour. The school made the move Wednesday in direct response to COVID-19 cases. On November 10th, the school learning of multiple people who did test positive for the virus. Now students are set to learn virtually, officially through November 25th. On-site learning will resume on November 30th. And in South Dakota, several classes at Elk Point Jefferson Elementary are moving online. School officials say the move is due to positive coronavirus cases among staff members. Through an investigation, it was determined that one section of second grade and both sections of fourth grade will transition to online learning through Tuesday, November 17th. All close contacts have since been notified. Earlier this week, Governor Reynolds announcing some new health measures as coronavirus cases continue spiking. This means new measures for Sioux City businesses. They must now limit groups to eight people with six feet of distancing between other groups. One business manager says the added precautions are frustrating for establishments trying to move forward. It almost feels like we're, we're taking a step back. I know that the, the COVID numbers have been way up lately, especially around this area. Um, again, it's just everybody just needs to do their part to kind of uh, to, to, to follow the, the guidelines that are listed out for us. I know there's no mandate for masks, but they, they help. Coming up tonight at 6, KCAU 9 news reporter Lydia Vasquez explains how some businesses are adapting to these new measures. 
And as case numbers continue rising around Siouxland, so does the number of people in need of plasma. LifeServe Blood announcing they are in critical need right now of plasma donations. They are nearly two weeks away from completely running out. Those who have tested positive for COVID-19 or have antibodies from the virus are encouraged to contact LifeServe to make donation arrangements. Doctors are turning antibodies to help people recover from the virus. And it looks like the research is saying that your antibodies are highest soonest after infection. So, you know, the sooner we can get someone in after they've been symptom free for 14 days, the better. Because the more antibodies in the plasma that we can give a critically ill hospital patient, the better outcome for that patient. Participants can donate every seven days for up to a month. Then they need to take a month off before donating again. We do have a link on our website right now. Again, that address is SiouxlandProud.com, and there you can find donation details. In crime news, a man suspected of breaking into a residence and shooting another man is behind bars tonight. The shooting was one of three unrelated shootings that all happened in the early morning hours of November 1st. 22-year-old Christian Armando Morelos of Sioux City turned himself into the Woodbury County Sheriff's Office this morning. Morelos is facing several felony charges, including intimidation with a dangerous weapon, domestic assault causing injury, willfully causing serious injury, and willfully causing bodily injury. Now, according to police, Morelos entered a woman's home through the kitchen window. He had a gun and shot a man that was visiting that woman. Morelos's bond is set at $100,000. You can read further into the incident on our website. Again, the address there on your screen. And it's time tonight for our first check on the weather. Meteorologist Marcus Beasley standing by. Marcus, again, one of those days it was nice to see the sun once those flurries cleared out, but temperatures very cold. That's right, Sophie. It has been very cold today, and it looks like we're going to continue to see that cold weather overnight tonight. So if you have your coat out, which I'm sure you probably already do, you're going to need it out tonight if you plan on heading outside. High temperatures today mostly staying at or below freezing throughout much of Sioux, Siouxland. Only getting up to 31 degrees in Sioux City today, 33 in Wayne, 32 in Lamar's and Cherokee. Storm Lake getting out of the... Or, Getting above freezing, I should say, at 34 degrees, 37 for your high temperature in Denison and Carroll reaching up to 41 today. Overnight tonight, our temperatures will drop down to around 10 to 15 degrees. Anywhere in that range here throughout Siouxland is what most of us will see. It does look like we are going to see temperatures a bit warmer tomorrow with more sunshine. Details on all of that in the 9 on 9. Sophie? All right, thanks a lot, Marcus. Well, lawmakers tonight scrambling to try and pass a coronavirus relief bill to help millions of Americans still struggling financially. But Democrats and Republicans remain divided on a path forward. D.C.'s Raquel Martin reports on both sides as they dig in their heels. This is a red alert. Thursday, Democratic leaders Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi accused Republicans of ignoring the raging pandemic to peddle false election conspiracies. Thousands are dying. We don't have time for these kinds of games. The two insist Biden's victory proves Americans want a more aggressive approach and called on Republicans to pass Democrats more than $2 trillion COVID relief deal. We really have to focus in on how we're fighting this. Wisconsin Democratic Senator Tammy Baldwin says it's time to strike a compromise. Speaking for myself, I am uh, absolutely ready to do that. She says Wisconsin businesses are crippled and hospitals are overwhelmed. For two days in a row, the state has reported more than 7,000 new cases. They're in very dire straits. But even after months of debate, Democrat and Republican leadership remain as divided as ever. The only thing that's standing in the way, in my view, Speaker Pelosi. House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy says Democrats are blocking Republican efforts to pass target relief for hospitals, businesses, and the unemployed. They should drop this ridiculous partisan gamesmanship. Republican Missouri Senator Josh Hawley blasted Democrats who say Republicans are distracted by the election. That's nonsense. Republicans are here. We have attempted repeatedly to move a bill onto the floor. So far, negotiations haven't resumed since the election. In Washington, Raquel Martin, KCAU 9 News. And the economic hardship of COVID-19 continues to impact the arts community. How struggling galleries nationwide are fighting to stay open coming up. And it is looking like we are going to see some seasonal temperatures in the forecast with more windy weather on Sunday. Next week, 50s and 60s possible. Details on all of that after the break. You're watching KCAU 9 News with Sophie Herber and meteorologist Marcus Beasley. This is KCAU 9 News at 5. 
Thanks for sticking with us on this chilly day. Uh, a wintry scene mm -hmm. still across yeah. most of Siouxland because that snow that fell a few days ago and again this morning uh -huh. lingering because we can't seem to crack yeah. freezing in so many places today. Right, staying below freezing for most of us today with cloudy skies much of the day as well. Really keeping that snow around and even though the roadways are pretty nice throughout Siouxland, we're still seeing a lot of snow on the uh, grassy surfaces outside. So really anything that isn't roadway or pavement, still seeing that snow stick around. The view outside right now from the KCAU 9 studio brought to you by the Port Neil Welding Company showing that we are seeing quiet weather out there now. Again, we had a very brief period of some quick moving snow showers move across the area earlier today, but now we're seeing those mostly clear skies. And again, road conditions throughout much of Siouxland are normal. We had some roads earlier today around the Spirit Lake Emmitsburg area that were partially covered, but it looks like those have improved here in the last few hours. So we are again seeing fairly normal road conditions. But again, exercise caution tonight as you're driving because temperatures, they are going to be pretty cold. So a few slippery spots they could develop later on tonight. And then by the end of the week, upper 50s to low 60s possible before another cold front moves in to the area next weekend. You know, I would say uh, if I had to bet <laughs> we started the month uh, yeah. off with almost some record high temperatures. Yeah. I think we did hit that a few mm -hmm. days here in Siouxland. Then we went way below. <laughs> and then we're going up again. Yep. I'm going to say we're going to end November uh, right on average. Okay. I think that's a good guess. <laughs> we are seeing kind of a roller coaster here with yeah. temperatures. And that's the, uh, the fun of transitional seasons here in the Midwest. You never really know what you're going to get until it's a few days out. And you're like, okay, it's yeah. going to be hot this week and cold next week. 48 hours after we had <laughs> 70s, we went down and had snow. Oh, there you go. All right. Keeps you on your toes. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Mark. Marcus well, Area College getting a facelift for its name, at least. Morningside College announcing today it'll soon be known as Morningside University. The name change is meant to reflect the growing amount of graduate students being admitted. If you'd like, you could read the full digital exclusive story. It's on our website right now, SiouxlandProud.com or the KCAU 9 News app. Well, they say heroes come in all different shapes and sizes, and you can add ages to the list. The story of one young hero who came to the rescue coming up. But first, there are signs of change in the art community. For sale signs, that is, how artists are working to inspire, even in these times. Next. Welcome back. The economic hardship of COVID-19 continues, impacting Denver's art community tonight, according to artists who work in the district on Santa Fe. Galleries there trying to survive while others have already been forced to close up. Michael Konopasik reports. A drive up Santa Fe. It's all it takes to see the signs of change, spelling out the words for sale and for lease. It's strange. <laughs> Richard Dotson runs Grace Gallery Fine Art at 9th and Santa Fe. As you can see, we lost a few galleries down here this time. He says four galleries just in his block alone did not reopen after the early pandemic lockdown. So many businesses have unfortunately shut down or had to really change how they do things. Down the road at the Denver Art Society. Sculpture, painting, drawing. More than 60 local artists continue their effort to inspire during this depressing time. We're not doing as well as we would in normal times, but we're open. People are buying art. Handmade collage artist Curtis Bergeson points to this district's previous moneymaker. Pre-COVID First Friday festivities could always be counted on to bring in thousands of shoppers, but that was then, and this is now. That, of course, has hurt our income hurt our popularity. But the artwork continues. We're surviving. And that's the word we keep hearing here, surviving, with the hope that these finished products can help brighten moods. I think they were sitting around in their houses looking at those white walls and realizing that they needed to have something on there to look at. Art, maybe that's what we need in this year of uncertainty. Protecting the family off and the job of parents, but after a scary fire, one young boy taking the title of protector now. We'll explain how next. Heroes come in all different sizes and shapes. Today, we introduce you to a boy who saved his family from a house fire. Kelly Hoskins has the story. 11-year-old Jace Coons is being credited with helping save his entire family from a fire that destroyed their Edwardsville home Friday afternoon around 4. I went in the living room and I told the dog to be quiet, and then I saw smoke coming under the door. So I went to the front door, I peeked out and saw orange flames. He's screaming, your house is burning down, your house is burning down. The family of seven lost everything in their home. Everything I, I have is gone. Jay saw the flames and raced to the only exit, a window, in his room on the main level. We all went to my room and we was tearing out the door. Then I put, then we put the blinds up and I punched out the screen. We all was running out the door. 
We're learning out the window. I couldn't believe everybody made it out of it. Every time I think about that, that's hard to grab. The family is now homeless and trying to figure out how they will rebuild. They are grateful everyone made it out safely with no injuries. I'm lucky to have my family. The entire family says Jace is pretty extraordinary. He's relieved he got everyone out, including his 12-year-old sister, Otilia. It feels good. I'm a hero. <laughs> yeah. Big hero H, we call yeah. it. Yeah. It feels good. The family did not have homeowner's insurance and has set up a GoFundMe page. Smart little boy. Well, do you know someone with a unique skill or passion? If so, we want to know them as well. Starting next week, we share their stories. I hope you'll share those Siouxland stories with me. It's easy. Shoot us an email. News at KCAUTV.com. Briefly explain what it is that makes this person so interesting. Let's take a live look outside right now over Storm Lake. Sunset there. Marcus returns with another check on our forecast coming up next. So stay with us. Before we wrap up here at 5, let's check in first with Tim for what's coming up at 6 in the newsroom. Hi, Tim. Hey, good Thursday afternoon, Sophie. Of course, coming up at 6, we'll take a look at the latest COVID information. We'll check in with Siouxland governors, how they're attacking the rising numbers of cases in our three states. Also coming up tonight at 6, uh, we now have uh, more information about that fire in North Sioux City last night. Cleanup underway at Sioux Laundry today in North Sioux City after fire extinguished extensively damaged part of that business last night. Fire officials say linens inside a dryer ignited causing the fire. They produced more smoke than actual fire and kept crews there for about five hours last night. And the pandemic has left us all feeling stir crazy and a little lonely. For seniors, that feeling can be especially strong as they try to wait out the isolation. At six, how two women are getting through all of it. And a record setting day at the state football playoffs, Rems and St. Mary's tops the century mark. Jake has that coming up at six as well. Now back to you. A full busy night. Thanks a lot, Tim. And a very cold overnight yeah. we can expect. You said temperatures dropping down into the teens. Yeah, lower teens actually. Anywhere from around 10 to 15 is where most of us will fall to tonight. I think here in Sioux City, lower teens there around 12 degrees tonight for your low. Winds will be light out of the south at around 5. Tomorrow, though, winds return gusting up to around 25 with high temperatures in the low 40s. All right. Thanks a lot, Marcus. Thank you for joining us. I'll see you back here at 6. Until then, have a great night.